Okay, so the following examples illustrate how to use a Riemann sum to approximate definite integrals. And I'm also going to introduce to you a meaning of the definite integral in a particular case. Okay, so if you remember back to our first couple of lectures, we talked about the interpretation of the derivative was instantaneous rate of change. And so if you had an amount and you took the derivative of a function that represented the amount of something, you got the rate of change in that amount at a particular time. If we go backwards from that idea, so if f prime of x is the rate of change of a quantity f, then the definite integral of f prime from a to b gives the total change in that amount or just the amount. Okay, so that's what you need to really recognize here. And this is uh, something that you'll, uh, I keep doing that on accident. This right here is what you need to have uh, in your knowledge bank as you come into class. Whenever you integrate a rate, you get an amount. So if you need an amount and you're given a rate, you're gonna integrate to get that amount. Okay, so let me illustrate how we're gonna use a right Riemann sum in this problem. This is talking about the volume of a spherical hot air balloon, expands as the air inside the balloon is heated, and the table is giving us selected values of the rate of change of the radius of the balloon. Okay, so that's very important that you understand we are given a rate of change in this problem. Okay, so it says to use a right Riemann sum with five subintervals indicated by the data in the table to approximate that integral. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite down the integral. So the integral from zero to 12 of r prime of t dt. And then this is an approximation. So I'm gonna draw an approximation symbol, not an equal symbol. Okay, so for a right Riemann sum, here's what we do. We take a look at our first subinterval. So our first subinterval is here between the time values 0 and 2. Since this is a right Riemann sum, we're going to take the right hand y value as the number that we want. So the right hand y value here is 4.0. And then because it's a rectangle, we have to multiply by the width. Well, the width in this subinterval is from 0 to 2. Okay, which means that the width is going to be 2. Plus, now I go to the next rectangle on the next subinterval. So the next subinterval is here from 2 to 5. Well, again, I'm doing a right Riemann sum, so I'm going to take the right hand number in that subinterval, which is the 2.0. So I'm going to write that down 2.0, and then multiplied by the width of that subinterval, and the width of that subinterval is 3 since the subinterval went from 2 to 5. So it's basically just the difference in the t values. Plus, go to the next one. Again, I'm going to take the right-hand value from that subinterval, so that's going to be 1.2, multiplied by the width, which if I look at the difference in the t values is going to be 2. Plus, go to the next subinterval, 1.2 to 0.6. We're going to take the 0.6 since we're doing a right Riemann sum and then multiply by the width, which is from 7 to 11, which gives me 4. And then finally, we're going to use the last subinterval. We're going to take the right hand value there, which is 0.5, multiply by the width, which in this case is 1. Okay, and just for time's sake, I went ahead and did the arithmetic there. It's 19.3. Now, using correct units, explain the meaning of this integral in terms of the radius of the balloon. So again, we are integrating a rate of change. Anytime we integrate a rate of change, it gives us the change in the amount of that quantity. And so this integral, and I'm gonna rewrite it down here so I can explain what it means, since we are integrating a rate of change, this is the change in the radius. Okay, and it does say to use correct units, so I need to look back up and see what would my radius be measured in. Well, since the rate of change was measured in feet per minute, my radius is going to be measured in feet. And then the last thing that I need to talk about are the bounds of integration. So the bounds of integration were from zero to 12, and so I need to say from t equals zero to t equals to 12, and time in this problem was measured in minutes. Okay, 
So that is a way to figure out what the meaning of that definite integral is. And you're going to have to get used to doing this kind of thing in class, justifying your answer and explaining the meaning of your answer as well. Okay, is your approximation greater than or less than the actual value of the integral? So this right here, they're talking about the actual value of the integral. They want us to say, is this an approximation uh, greater than or less than? Well, if you notice our function up here, r prime of t is decreasing. And since we used a right Riemann sum, a decreasing right Riemann sum is always an under approximation. If you think back to your acronym, I love you, Drew, if we have a decreasing function with a right Riemann sum, that's going to be an under approximation. Okay, so we're going to write our answer and we are going to say this is an under approximation. And the reason for that is because r prime of t is decreasing. And not only that, we used a right Riemann sum. So we used a right Riemann sum. Okay, so those are the two reasons that you have to state for whether or not something is an under approximation or an over approximation. And this acronym right here is incredibly helpful, so make sure you don't forget that. Okay, example two, we wanna now do a left Riemann sum, but before we do that, it says to use correct units and interpret the meaning of this definite integral in the context of the problem. Well, V of t is given as a velocity. It says back up here that Ben's velocity is given by V of t. So V of t is a velocity. So if I have absolute value of velocity, remember that absolute value just makes everything positive. Velocity is a quantity that can have either positive or negative values. Positive values would mean that you're traveling in the positive direction and negative values would mean you're traveling in the negative direction. But if I take off the direction part and only care about the magnitude or the value, then really what we're talking about is speed. Okay, so that's something that you'll need to know in class also is that the absolute value of velocity is the speed. And so basically what happens is whenever we integrate speed, we're getting the total distance traveled by whatever particle or person that we're talking about. Okay, so what you need to know is that this integral is talking about total distance traveled. And in this particular problem, we're talking about a person, Ben, who's riding his unicycle back and forth along a straight east-west track. So what we're gonna say is that the integral from zero to 60 of the absolute value of the velocity, dt, is the total distance Ben rides his unicycle. I apologize for the bad handwriting here and also the bad spelling. Let me see if I can spell unicycle, U-N-I-C-Y-C-L-E. There we go. And then I need to think about what is my distance going to be measured in? Well, it's not going to be measured in meters per second. It's going to be measured in meters. So we're going to say in meters from, again, I have to say something about the time, t equals to zero to t equals to 60 seconds. Okay, so that is what I have to have in my answer in order to get full credit. Okay, second part of the problem says to approximate the integral from 0 to 60 of the speed using a left Riemann sum this time with subintervals indicated by the data. Now because we're integrating velocity, this b of t right here doesn't really matter. It probably mattered for another part of this question. This is a released FRQ. So you're not going to use that on this particular part, so I'm just going to scratch it out just to make sure that we don't accidentally um, use a number from that row. Okay, so the integral from 0 to 60 of the absolute value of velocity dt is approximately using a left Riemann sum. Well, if I look at the first subinterval, what I'm going to use this time is the left endpoint. So the left endpoint there is going to be the one that's on the left. That would be the 2.0. And then again, I'm going to multiply by the width 
of that subinterval, which goes from 0 to 10, giving me a width of 10. Plus, go to the next subinterval, that would be 2.3 and 2.5. We're going to use the one on the left since we're doing a left Riemann sum, and then multiply by the width of that subinterval, which is 30, since that subinterval goes from 10 to 40. Plus, the last subinterval we're going to use 2.5, multiplied by the width of that subinterval, which is going to be 20. Okay, and if you do the arithmetic there, that's going to equal 139 meters. Okay, so that's a left Riemann sum. We did a right Riemann sum in example one. So if you have any questions on either of those, then please let me know.